time now for the compound men's quarter final between Austria's Nico Vinner and Mexico, Mexico's Miguel Vichera. The Austrian is 24 years old, world number 28, and has some experience on this shooting line, having shot in the team competition. Miguel Bichera also has that experience. The 21-year-old is the world number 70, and he experienced some real issues on this shooting line, having a miss registered on his scoreboard in the team event. Intriguing one, Nicky. Yeah, we had some windy conditions yesterday and it's going to be interesting to see if that comes back today and how he's going to handle it. Well, first end of this quarter-final and Nico Venner is going to get us underway. Ten. And you see that wind flag and his t-shirt blowing now. Great start from him. Well, the Austrian's a big man, but he was getting buffeted around there. A 28 is his starting score. Conditions are part to play, but a 29 for the carry just shows that he's not only handled the difficult experience he had on this finals range earlier in the week, but also that he's handling the conditions out there, which look very gusty, Nicky. Yeah, it's really tough <laughs> trying to keep that bow still. Such a small target, 50 metres away. Yeah, compound, not holding much weight on their fingers at that point, so you really feel everything hitting you. And, you know, the stronger you can be, the better. You know, it's impossible to hold the bow still um, completely, but you've got to you know, do the best you can. Take a look back at the Keros. Shots very happy with things. And he's had a tough ride through this competition, uh, knocking out PJ Deloche of France. Uh, Jamie Lutz, the reigning world champion in the USA. And then Stefan Hansen from Denmark. So it's not been the easiest of rides here for Bichera. He's earned his place in the quarterfinals. And he's earned his lead here as we go into end number two. Nico Venner will shoot first again. Yes. That's it. Much more solid on that shot. Grouping though, all low right. Just going to move his sight as he does now. Okay, looks like he's shooting a hinge, just settling in. Group him, but you've got to move them over. 
Okay, so look at this release aid. See the angle it is now, settling into the shots. It starts to rotate. Ten, ten, ten. Fantastic shooting. Yeah, perfect 30 for a 58. 10 will get 57. Yeah, right ten, in the middle of the target for 28. And just like that, the lead has changed hands. McCara on 57, Lena on 58. And Nikki, talk more about this hinge because uh, we often see the trigger release from, from these, these athletes on the thumb. Uh, is, it, is it becoming less common? Uh, there's a good mixture between people shoot hinge or trigger. So Miguel is shooting a trigger. He, you can see um, his thumb go on to... Um, literally a, like a barrel he puts his thumb onto and then makes the shot go off by squeezing that whereas Nico is definitely shooting a hinge where you can see a real rotation in the release aid and as it rotates it's literally a hinge effect um, that makes the release aid go off so two different styles um, the hinge is quite difficult can be quite difficult in the wind you get buffeted around you're not perhaps in complete control of when the shot's going to go but that's usually a good thing but in the wind it can be a challenge Kara led after the first. And the Austrian has fought back to lead after the second. We go into end number three. And it will be Miguel Becerra of Mexico who will lead us out, training by a single point. So you watch his thumb there, going on to that barrel that we talked about, that silver barrel. Making that shot go off. Different tier, different shape of the release aid. Just rotates it until it breaks. around a bit again there just dropping it low <laughs> again looked affected by the wind but right in the middle going to see the lead. Yeah, extend by Nico Bernard. Let's take it from the And that another 30 for him. He's really dialed into the centre, Nicky, and he's starting to look like he's going to pull away as well. Yeah, he's just settling into this, and it is tricky with these variable conditions, but he's handling it better. I think the judge is going over to perhaps talk about him drawing his bow. Uh, you know, they get 20 seconds. So you have to wait until the other archer's finished, the buzzer's gone, then your th 20 seconds start. So I think it might be possible he's drawing a little bit perhaps on or before that buzzer goes off. So I think the judge just reminded him to um, go at the right time. to uh, get out there and make his lead even bigger. Nico Renner pulled in by the referee. But we've seen uh, the Austrian coach before. She, he seems to handle her athletes really well. And uh, I mean, you know a thing about coaching, don't you? You've got uh, a number of young athletes in Great Britain that you coach. Yeah, you know, the, the coach's role there is really important to try and keep them nice and calm in the box. Just each and every arrow, one at a time. No future thinking. Time now for end number four. Miguel Becerra of Mexico training by three now. We'll shoot first. 
Okay, does a funny little action, doesn't he, just to get himself settled there into his anchor point. Doesn't matter how you get there, but it's the same every time. Carrier yeah. here on for his first perfect. Well, it looks like he's playing pretty much directly at him, drops the arrow low. 29. It's 114 for him. Chance for a big lead here now, but the wind has really picked up. <laughs> Didn't look happy, but that's the third perfect in a row and a massive four point lead after four of the five ends. And it looks to me like Nico Venner is going to be marching his way into the semi-finals. Nico did so well there, really got hit by some wind, buffed it around, I think he did just manage to hang on that little bit longer, waited it for, for it to settle and then made a, a really good shot in those conditions and within that 20 seconds, crucially. Well, you can not only see the uh, wind conditions here, you can hear them. Uh, we are right next to uh, the mighty Missouri River and it is very very flat around the river at this part in South Dakota in the Anklin Riverside Park sits in this beautiful location but is buffeted by the wind when it picks up as it drives its way down the longest river in North America but it does make for interesting archery that's for sure Okay, then at four points up here and has one foot in the semi-finals. Count Becker has no choice. He's just got to put the pressure on as we start in number five. Nine. In these conditions, anything can happen, so you just got to stick with it. Yeah. Never looking happy with that shot as it breaks, but he's doing a great job, Nico. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Long hold. The weather got worse, but he still managed to get it into the 10. He's just clipped the line there, and he's on for a tremendous score here, Venna. Cow nine. pops his last one into the nine for a 28. Uh, 138. And, well, unless something terrible happens here, okay, Venna is going into the semi finals at these world championships. And finishes with a brilliant score, dropping just two points through his 15 arrows, four perfects in a row in ends two through to five and a warm handshake from Mikel Becerra of Mexico for the Austrian who goes into the semi-finals here in Yankton. Cracking score, Nicky. Really was, you know, dropping two points in these conditions. Absolutely fantastic shooting. So let's see if we can keep it together through the semi. You can just see those two high nines, high left nines. Picara started so well, took the lead, in fact, 
Uh, but Austria's Nico Venner is here and he means business. Well, the wind will keep them cool, that's for sure. And it is a balmy 25 degrees, so I'm pretty sure he'll be going off for a cool one before his semi finals, Nico Venner, as we wait for the next quarter final.